The American criminal justice system consists of 2.2 million people behind bars right now, plus tens of millions of family members, corrections and police officers, victims of crime, judges, prosecutors. Newsy has partnered with The Marshall Project to bring you a series of stories about the criminal justice system and how it affects average Americans. Here's the first episode of We Are Witnesses. When he came out, he was not the same. There was too much baggage he brought from Rikers with him. The memory of beatings, starvation. There was times when he wasn't even allowed to take a shower for two weeks. He was angry. He started getting real paranoid. And his life just spiraled from that. My name is Venita Browder, and I'm the mother of Khalif Browder. Khalif was on his way home. A police car stopped, and I'm assuming the guy who made the complaint was in the car and told the police that Khalif had robbed him of a backpack. Khalif kept saying, I don't know this guy. I didn't rob him. He was told that they were going to just go to the precinct to kind of sort things out. Well, that sorting out took three years. We went to court. We had a legal aid. And the legal aid told me from the beginning that it was a BS case. He said, don't worry about it, it's a BS case. But meanwhile, my son is being held at Rikers. He would tell me things when I would visit him about being beat. He told me, Ma, I gotta fight. If I don't, they're gonna think I'm soft, I gotta fight. All it did for Khalif was get him in more trouble and more days in solitary. Imagine being locked up 23 hours a day. This is your life. Four walls, that's it. He couldn't take it. They told him, we're going to break you. That's what they told my baby, that they're going to break him. And in reality, they did. At first, you could see he was relieved, that he was home, he could do what he wanted. He started Bronx Community, and he was doing okay, but then, I mean, he was really out of it, and he couldn't keep it up. He quit. He felt that everybody was out to get him. Everybody was a police plant. He stopped speaking to friends. He would get real angry, and then there were times where he would just this look would come over him, and he would just, like, stare. It was a Saturday morning. It was just me and Khalif. And I hear him upstairs doing all this moving around, and I'm like, well, maybe Khalif is positioning the furniture to get comfortable. I didn't pay attention, because when Khalif is upset, he pace. He paces. Then all of a sudden, I heard this boom. I run upstairs. I didn't see anything. I ran into the next room, and the air, the air conditioning cover was kicked out, and I just saw something hanging. I ran back downstairs, and as I opened the backyard door, Khalif 
was hanging there. I miss my son. I miss him so much. As part of our partnership, I talked with Neil Barsky, the founder and executive director of the Marshall Project, about We Are Witnesses. I wanted to know how the project all came together and what his team heard from these people so intimately impacted by the criminal justice system. Tell me how your team at the Marshall Project came about starting this project. What we haven't done up till now and what is really hard to do is really convey the enormity of the uh, system of mass incarceration, by which I mean not just the people who are incarcerated uh, or the attorneys, but the whole ecosystem uh, of mass incarceration. And what we wanted to show was the impact the system has on crime victims. How often do we hear from guards who maybe can convey the terror of walking the halls of a prison, uh, as well as people who are incarcerated and public defenders and judges, et cetera. So we felt that simply by having people, real people, tell their stories without rhetoric, without preachiness, we could convey simply the enormity of the system. But in doing this, we found such interesting people. We also showed the humanity of people. How does a crime victim have the compassion for his attacker? How do parents uh, cope with a son who hanged himself in prison? Um, and how do we get our lives back? And sometimes you, we found very unexpected things. It's a 360 degree look at the tentacles of the system. And in, along the way, we found, I think, incredibly compelling characters that are, uh, well, some of them will really rip your heart out. A lot of these voices who we hear in We Are Witnesses mm -hmm. are not the usual faces and voices that you see mm -hmm. on TV all the time, making their right. cases, who have their talking points. They're just telling their stories. I wonder, right. just within their stories, did you hear any recurring themes of what maybe they would like to see different happen in the future when it comes to the criminal justice system? Well, you know, everybody. Well, I would have two observations from the in the from the from the series. One is that the system is bigger than individuals. You know, we interview a father who's very affluent, whose son is mentally ill, and and he says, you know, once you're in the system, there's no getting out. And so, you you know, we like to think of people who are affluent or white who have advantages, and I think overall they do. But once you're there, once you're in behind bars, once you're in part of that sort of it's bigger than any individual. And the second observation I would make is simply like, I was, as I, I was struck by the humanity of everybody. Um, you can retain your humanity um, even if you, when you've uh, encountered injustice, uh, tragedy, um, if it's a loved one or even personal um, injustice. So I think what, you, what I took away, and I, I thought we would do this and have some great profound statement about the system other than it's terrible, which it is, but we were surprised by just understanding how these people cope and what tools do you need to cope and to overcome. And most of it is for, through compassion and healing and not anger and not bitterness. And that was powerful. And they did that by showing us, not telling us, but showing us who they were.